sponsored by Squarespace. So gather around my colorful comrades, because I've been knee deep in a blizzard of white miniatures lately. It's almost like I stumbled upon Santa's secret painting studio itself, or the Yeti's art school enrollment list. And I think that's a good opportunity to finally talk about painting white and all its pitfalls. So today I'm unleashing upon you not one, not two, but three ways to paint white that will make you question if snowflakes themselves are taking notes. And as we dive into this adventure, you'll realize these techniques are like a tree of penguins, synchronized swimming in a sea of creativity. Because spoiler alert, the secret sauce to painting white stays the same with all of these approaches. We'll also address the elephant in the paint studio. I'd even say it's woolly mammoth size when it comes to whitening things up. It's bigger than Bigfoot's footprint and more obvious than that you should stay away from yellow snow. Chalkiness. These three minis all have been painted to different levels of complexities. So no matter what your goal is, whether you're racing against time to build a mini army or aiming for a showcase piece that will make eyebrows do the wave, I'm sure you can use all of these tips no matter what level you are in your painting journey. But my fellow pigment pushers, let's not get ahead of ourselves like a cheetah on roller skates. And let's start by looking at the first approach. And I'm gonna throw you a little challenge while you watch this first part. Try to find out what the general principle is that I just mentioned and that I usually apply when painting white. I always wanted to do an Imperial Guard officer in white armor, which is there to signify his superior rank. Remember, we can use colors or the feelings those colors evoke to tell stories. Just imagine this Cadian standing out from an otherwise green army. First I mix the shadow color and here I use the color I already had on most of the model, which is burnt umber, and added off-white to create the particular warm beige and covered all of the white parts with it. Then I started to mix in gray-blue to shift the color more towards the cold spectrum. I always like to lay down a layer of solid color when painting highlights to get an idea for how intense the color will be and then glaze over the transitions. You also see that I cover the shadow color slightly with this glaze. There will be an extended video and a PDF guide about this miniature on my Patreon by the end of the month if you want to see this technique explained more in depth. The shadow color should actually be reserved for the darkest parts of the armor, which is more to the side, under the arms for example. So I did add another thin layer, but you can still see some of the darker paint shine through. But just keep in mind that you don't always have to mix paint for the next highlight step. You can create transitions by increasing the number of transparent layers you stack on top of each other. I also made sure that all of the outlines of the shapes were covered, and then I gradually brought up all shapes to the same level before moving on. Always making sure there's a bit of my shade color still somewhat visible. At the same time, I made sure my brightest parts were covered in this layer completely, so I had a solid base for the next highlight step. Then I added more off-white to the blue, and now that I had a better picture of which parts needed to be brighter, added more solid layers on these upper parts of the chest plate, and then continued with adding highlights to all of the shapes, always starting with a solid layer and fading out the transitions. Oh, and uh, don't forget to outline the edges. And whenever I felt like my highlights covered too little area, I would use the stacking layers trick to make them wider, without losing too much of the smoothness. Always pushing the pigments towards the brighter area. I keep repeating this while adding more and more off-white to the mix. Only for the very last layer, I did pick some white from the palette and defined the highest areas and the parts I wanted the brightest like most edges and the middle of the chest plate, for example. When painting, we always have the option, and usually we should do it, to increase the readability of our miniatures. Which means the individual parts are properly separated, nothing bleeds into another element, and we can clearly see what's going on. But also within these elements, we want to push the contrast, and we usually can do that by defining the edges, aka edge highlighting. Or alternatively, we can do a very dark panel lining. When painting bright colors such as white, however, we do have another option. Whenever it's appropriate, we can chip the edges with a dark color to push the contrast further. Here I grabbed chocolate brown and carefully dabbed on the side of my brush in a controlled chaos pattern. Occasionally also adding a line or an extra dent, but I really just wanted to emphasize the edges to add a bit more definition and story. I tried to achieve a very smooth result with this. I also made sure to keep the blues and a little of the warmer brown in the shadows. That's why I used a lot of layers. But what if you don't want to spend that much time? When working with bright colors, especially in the case of white, I always feel it's easier to shade down than to highlight. 
And to illustrate that, I started from a white base coat of the next miniature. Contrast paint is especially good for this because you can push the pigments to pool in areas you want shaded and the gradients are relatively smooth with very little effort. Because the contrast paint covers all the area while only slightly staining the higher parts. And this slight staining is great for painting white because it gives us a great mid-tone to work off of. At this point, I define all edges with off-white and you can see how the definition starts to build. Again, I reserve pure white for these edges. I want the brightest. Are you slowly beginning to see a pattern? To maximize the contrast, I did some dark lining, especially below these panels where a hard cast shadow would generally form. Shading down instead of highlighting also helps with avoiding that dreaded chalkiness. When highlighting with white, the difference between layer steps oftentimes can be too big. Maybe you are mixing in too much white too quickly because white is not like most colors. It's the brightest pigment we have. Take highlighting blue for example. When we're highlighting a mid-tone blue with a brighter blue, the value step usually is not as big as highlighting a mid-tone with white. And especially when we stretch out paint too much, we have the white pigments occupying some space and in between we still have a lot of the dark color to show. And then we get this particular pattern that we call chalkiness. So by now, I guess you finally figured out what the secret sauce to painting white is. And that is not using white until you go for that very last highlight and make everything read as white. But how on earth does this make sense? Why are we doing this? Let's do a bit of a deep dive. Let's look up something that is supposed to be white. An example I always show in my private coachings is a white wolf. You can see that only a fraction of its fur is really white. Lots of darker hair is sprinkled in and a lot of the bright ones are shifting towards yellow or beige. You would not paint this fur with pure white. This beluga whale looks like it has pure white skin. But if we're looking closer, there's other factors at play. For example, when the skin gets more delicate, you can see red blood vessels shine through and of course, the blue of the water is reflected from below. And a lot of the volumes, like the round head, cast shadows. And if we take a color picker, we can see that only a small percentage shows pure white. Now, this white car has so many angles and shapes that cast shadows. There's only a few areas where we can pick up pure white. Yet, we perceive this car as white. It also depends on how much light is in this situation. It depends on the material. Is it biological? Is it fabric? Metal? Is the material glossy or dull and so on. But rarely is something only white. Even a white wall isn't just white if there's angles and light involved. Really good 2D artists realize this. Just look at these white superhero suits and how little actual white is in these pictures. The only time when white is starting to take over, they are either trying to show an internal glow or there's a really intense external light source. Now I'm sure the comment section is going to come up with fringe cases where all of what I said is just wrong, but we're not trying to recreate the fringe case. We are trying to create what is the general case because that is what our brain is used to seeing day in and day out. And I said this a couple of times already, whether miniatures are realistic or stylized, it doesn't matter. We only perceive something as bad when there is something out of the ordinary when something is breaking our expectations and isn't as we are used to seeing it if a shadow isn't where our brain expects it to be we feel a cognitive dissonance for example if there is not enough contrast on a mini that is a representation of something huge and it feels like it's lacking shadow or if something that we know is white just has too much white on it it just doesn't make sense to our brain Equipped with this knowledge, let's look at another miniature. I'm starting this Assault Intercessor Captain with a mix of Ashing Grey and Silver Grey. This looks really bright at this point, but once we hit it with the highlight colors, it's going to change the frame of reference and the shadow colors will look darker. Then I'm building the highlights with pure Silver Grey. And this is not just zenithal highlighting, as in light straight from above. You can see that I'm treating all of these shapes individually and build a volumetric highlight. Volumetric highlighting means we uh, consider the shape and also the material of a particular part of the miniature in front of us. And then we highlight accordingly. For example, a cylinder always has this particular line pattern and just spraying it from above at an angle will not always create a credible result. And I'm also considering if these highlights are on the upper side of the mini or if they are facing down and so on. And that's why I come back to pure ashing gray and darken some parts that are not really catching much light like the lower half of that knee. 
and under the arm for example. The last step is to build very confined highlights with a mix of silver grey and white and I'm staying within the area of the previous silver grey layer. These will be the base for my last highlight of pure white that I will add with the brush. At this point that's a good idea to add a gloss coat because we still need to add a pin wash to all of these deeper recesses. And even though we are painting white armor, I still go for a black recess shade. Or let's say almost black because lately I've been loving this starship filth that is a slightly greenish dark grey. I use this to separate the red colors from the white and you can see that it just creeps into the recesses without a lot of spill or creeping into paint layers thanks to the gloss varnish. But I also use it on these dark recesses within the white armor. And it instantly looks better simply because the contrast increases and making the features feel like they are casting hard shadows and not tiny or no shadows at all because they are on a miniature that is just over 1 inch big. After the oil wash has settled, usually that means leaving it overnight, I'm adding a matte varnish and then apply the last layer to the white armor. And just like before I'm picking out these edges that we can't define properly with the airbrush. Also I like painting with a brush and this is a lot of fun to me after the more technical steps with the airbrush and the oil paints. And to me this is always where the fun starts and at the same time where the miniature, the final result starts coming together. So the easier thing is to pick out the edges. I like on the collar and the helmet, also the fist. And then I'm creating the specular highlights and the parts I defined earlier through the volumetric definition with the airbrush. I think this is a good example for what I mean with having fun. You can see the line patterns I create on the armor part above the knee. And you can also see how the contrast increases between the shaded parts and the highlights and how everything starts to look more real and credible. I'm not really a fan of sub assemblies but the jump pack is really large so I made an exception and left it off as it was impossible to reach areas below this. And I'm picking out the edges of these prominent features, almost exaggerating the highlights a bit and below the grades of the air intake for example and also where the red freehand has shipped off as that adds a lot of definition to the finished piece and then I'm giving all of these shapes a final treatment and push them all the way to white. The method I'm using is stipple blending so I can achieve relatively smooth results while still having some texture showing. I have a video on my Patreon where I go into all the intricacies like how much solution you need for this and how to apply the dots and so on. Oh, and if you're interested in how I painted the rest of this miniature, you'll be able to find a full guide there in a bit. I didn't want this version to be too scratched up, but I still added a few chips with charcoal here and there, just to show that this is a battle-hardened veteran. So by now you should know the basics of painting white and if you have any more questions just put them in the comment section. And if you want to share your results feel free to join our community discord server. And if you want the whole world to see your miniatures online presented in an awesome way why not check out this video's sponsor. Squarespace makes it super easy to create professional looking websites. Just choose one of their award winning templates or create a template of your own with their intuitive and versatile editor. Whether you need a website for your hobbies or your professional life, Squarespace offers great plugins for anything your heart desires. Whether you want to just put up a professional looking gallery of your miniatures or other creative works, or if you want to kickstart your commission painting business, if you simply want to sell a couple of miniatures that you painted, or if you have anything else you want to present online, their easy to use features and professional support has you covered. Build your Squarespace website today with their easy to use, drag and drop and patented Fluid Engine system. Just follow the link in the description or go to squarespace.com Traverian and start your trial now. And if you like what you see, using this link also allows you to grab a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for watching, keep pushing that pigment and I'll see you in the next video.